Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Judy and this is Running So and So. Well, slight lack of the running, but a lot of the sewing. <laughs> I've still got this knee problem. 5K is taking 42 minutes at the moment because I am walking as well as running. But tomorrow, I might get a chance to run. So here we are. It is Bank Holiday Monday in the UK and I am going to put the camera up here. <laughs> so you can see us both. I've got Hannah here for her having a sewing afternoon and we are making bunting for the Jubilee. Can you see it Hannah up here look? I, I, I can, I've just, just gone picking up your wrong. volunteer. You've gone wrong, what have you done? I, I've cut, cut your finger? finger? No I've not cut my finger. What, what do you mean picking up my volunteer? What? Right, so Hannah is cutting her bunting out, but she says she's gone slightly wrong, so I don't quite know what I, she... I clipped an end when I should have... She's clipped an end. We have got the Lewis and Irene bunting panels. Have you got one there that's not been cut, Hannah? Yes, that one. So the bunting has come on panels like this. I can't do that. Can you see? And Hannah is cutting hers out, and I have already cut out her backing, and okay. here we go. I am going to now sew my backing, sew my flags. I'm going to let the camera roll. I'm going to put the camera behind us and you can just watch us as we're sewing these off. And then when I finish sewing mine, Hannah's going to sew hers. And while she's sewing hers, I'm going to turn mine round. We're just going to sew them using cream because it's cream or navy, Hannah? Cream. We'll just sew them using cream. Cream's in the sewing machine. We'll both use the same machine. Swap over halfway through. And as you can see, I've turned you around because now my lighting issue is resolved. I feel much happier. And I can, I feel as if people can see me. I've got my ring light there. So if I want to, I can pop it on. But at the moment, I think everything is fine and I'm really quite happy with it. Just before I start sewing, as you will see, today is Monday the 18th, Hannah? Yes, Monday the 18th. Monday the 18th of April. And my Friday sews from last Friday, which was the 15th, went live this morning. In fact, it went live not long before lunchtime. 42 hours it took to upload. And I'm just going to show you, put in here a picture of a map. And that area that is white, I'm going to put a circle around it, is the area in which I live. And then there is a code and it shows which areas are going to get fibre at what time. The colour of my area isn't even coded. <laughs> so I think I'm doomed. Some areas have got better, a better broadband than me and I think it comes down to the fact that um, it, where you, they keep saying it's where you are regarding the box and it's not actually because the houses further away from the box have got a better, have got a better signal than me. The reason I have poor broadband is simply it's, your house. it's the house. It's the K, the wire that comes up to the house, what the builders put in. And I had my current broadband provider came to the house earlier in the week, and they said, "Oh well, ooh, you know how they go. Ooh, well, <sighs> they pull aside and they go, well, you yeah, know, Mrs. Watson. You think, okay, here we go again. Something was missing from one of my phone box bits." So I decided that was put in and it, it made absolutely no difference. But I am going to go to a new provider from the beginning of May. So whether that actually works or not, I really don't know. Time will tell, but I'm get very fortunate. Yeah, I'm gonna get more for my money, but I'm very fortunate in that Melanie can upload faster even though she's in the village. Rachel um, lets me upload when I go to her house. I can upload at Hannah's, I can upload at Tristan's and I can upload at work. But sometimes when you're having quiet times at home and you don't want to go out, you've got to be able to upload at home. And as Rachel said to me, maybe you should upload on Tuesday, then it'll be ready for the Friday. <laughs> yes, I think she's got a very good point there. <laughs> but as those of you that know me personally will know, I am patient. Very patient. And on that note, I'm actually going to see how I do time lapse on this thing. <laughs> good, luck. Luck. good luck. Right. Encontré a una niña tan bonita Y ella siempre se ha parecido a Yemaya Y por la calle con su 
ropa azul camina y todo el mundo está gritando ay cómo va y arreponde camera is delightful it does have one little downfall and that is it doesn't have spare batteries you have to plug it in to charge it up so i am now ironing my flags now i you i like to have crisp egg uh, crisp eggs crisp edges <laughs> so we've sewn them and we've turned them around hannah has just oh she's just turned hers around there are hannah's just turned around it. mine are there uh, i've already started to put some together there and what I'm doing is I'm ironing them and I've got this daft technique. Actually, Hannah, have you got a minute? Could you just video it for me? Right. So Hannah's on the camera thing. So I've got my dressmaking shears and I've put them inside. Now, if you open them up, you can see that the points are there. And then I can take the iron and do the end and then pull the scissors out and it sort of pushes the sides together a little bit there. Let's push them out enough for me to now control where i want the iron to go and wind it back a bit that way i'll just do another one and there's the next one do another one so again scissors into the bottom opened out very there nice a bit further up iron it flat and then i'm gonna hold it still can you go over the top hand there we go and we've got the line where we want the uh, the flag to lay. Now, there's another way you can do it. I'm on video here, Hannah. And the other way is lay it flat this way and just iron down the seam there. Fold it over, iron down the seam the other side. Open it out. Put your scissors in again and open it out that way. Mm. And do it that way. I'll do another one. You can do. One more. One moment. One more. What was that? Puppy just tried to catch a wasp. Queen wasp season. Maggie goes for flies. Puppy does wasps and bees. You're not going to the vet. So here we go. Open this one out. Again, using the scissors to guide the bottom. You know, I think that might be the technique of... The, no, I think the scissor one's better. Scissor one's better. The scissor one's better because it's hot and you, you can't touch it. Okay. Yes, thank you. We've got some blue bias binding that was in the stash. It was on a reel. It was what was left over. The reel is over here. I mean, if you stand up things like this, big bias binding, it's always cheaper to buy. Just the reel of it, it's, I think it's much better. Let me just lift the camera up a minute, that's it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to attach the flags. Now, I tend to attach them freehand, so I shall start by putting in the bunting, the uh, putting in, putting in the binding, and just let me do the first couple of stitches. Um, on my own without turning the camera onto it. So what I'm going to do is I've ironed the int the inter I've ironed the binding over to make it easier for me. So I haven't got to fold that. So I'm just going to sew down a little way, probably oh 15 centimeters, 15 to 20 centimeters, which will be approximately six to nine inches you're working on inches yeah I've done about six to nine I've done about seven or eight inches so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to attach my flags now as they go through because I put them in individually I will trim very slightly here just pop the ring light on there because the clouds have come over and taken away my sunlight so in goes my first flag and I will record myself doing the flags going in um, but we won't record Hannah unless she really wants to be recorded. Yeah. It's a bit 
a bit full on, Hannah, when you've got the recording going. So I'm not saying that you need to pin this in place. I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't. You will know. If you want to pin them in, pin them in. If you don't, don't. If you want to make certain that they don't move, pin them in. But I have done a lot of bunting. One of the things I have been known to do hmm. is personalised bunting, which I've not done for a while. My wedding. Oh, the last lot. Yes, it was for your wedding, wasn't it? And I'm going very close to the edge here, but I know for a fact that I've gone off the edge of the tape there. So I will have to go back and do that little bit. So just be careful. You don't do what I've just done. Go back to the edge of the tape. I want to tell you what I'm wearing today because you keep seeing this flash of pink. <laughs> I'm wearing my Atelier Jupe Free de Blas, which I made during Rachel's Sew Along, which is heavenly comfortable. And I've just got it on over the top because I've been just trying to do jobs around the house today because the top is really comfortable and I knew I'd be doing some filming so I thought I'd have a nice top but at the bottom and what you can't see is I've got a pair of Ula leggings um, just below the knee length and I will be doing Ula leggings again very soon because I love them to bits and I could do with some new pairs for work so I've got three flags on there now and I'm just going to leave it running and I'll put you on to time lapse so Constantly buying, buying food. You got there, Anna? I have my finished bunting. We had to work a bit with the end pieces because there was less <laughs> of the binding because I seem to use too much. But a little bit of a crossover on all the flags. And this is the Lewis and Irene bunting uh, templates. It, it came as a printed sheet. I know that they did a rerun of this fabric, and ours came from. The Ours came from Bugweeds in York. We were one of the first to get it. We were very fortunate. We were there at the right time. We were at the right time. And I do know that Rebecca did get some more. So whether anybody's got any online, I really don't know. Morning, everybody. So, as I continue to try and get this camera to work to the best of my ability, I've come out running. And you should get no wind noise today because I've got a furry thing on the microphone. I'm doing run walk today to try and get back into things. I've got a, this niggly pain in my knee. watch I've just come into the middle of the woods where the girls love to go running and Maggie is desperate she's seen something and she wants to go off um, and look at the bluebells are they just not so beautiful I don't know if you can sense the sense of blue hue that I can see oh that one you can but over here is that not just so beautiful and I'm not going to go past them today, but sometimes I get white and sometimes pink bluebells in this wood. Sometimes the white ones are sort of over in that direction, but I can't see any today. They're usually pretty distinctive, but we've got them for a few weeks. So, off we go. We've got a um, busy day today. I've got to take some stuff to the tip for my son. I want to do some more sewing and promise to take Bridget into Selby and then somebody's going to the vet at quarter past three so i'll let you know how that goes later on in the vlog good morning everybody so friday friday sews and today i'm going to rachel's so my vlog will be uploaded at rachel's i might start it here so i walk through rachel's door it's just like going to school when i start to upload at home and then go to school or rachel's or tristan's or anybody it's my, my laptop walks through their door and goes 
Oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, thank goodness for that. Internet that works. Anyhow, Friday, it's still half term and, oh, let me just tilt the camera down. There we go. You can tell it's a, at home day, can't you? Because look what I've got on. Ultra favourite linden sweater in some kind of viscose jersey that I got from Fabricate yonks ago. I was um, looking for something. Um, Bridget asked if I had, this is ridiculous. Bridget asked if I had a makeup sharpener to sharpening your eyeliner pencil. Well, the answer was yes, I did. But when I went to, found it, to find it, I found this. It's an embroidery ring. But it's a very special one because I had this when I was 18. Because my mum said, you must bind it. So I've bound it really tightly, sewn it down. But then I found this. Now I know what's in this. And I'm desperately trying to remember, did I buy it in 1980, 1981, 1982, 1985, I think. 83, 82, 83. These are all the times I went to Norway in the 80s. And I'm sure I went again. I haven't been to Norway for a while, I need to go. But let's see what's in here. In here is um, embroidery and it came, oh look, there's a pin in here. You can tell it's old because look at the sellotape on the packaging. It's all gone. 1982. That's when I got it because I got it in Lillehammer. Um, in a place called... Who's fleecing? Uh, and I will try. I won't promise. But I will try and put the name of the shop here. And then I will put it in the description box below. If it's still in existence. Last time I went to Norway it was. And I last went to Norway in 2016. Um... Things have happened in our lives and it gets harder to go and see people as you get older and they've got sick parents and the like. But what it is, is a hardanger pattern for a table runner. So in my wisdom, I went on holiday with my friend Lynn. We went into Husvisen and we decided that we would buy, or I would buy, some hardanger. And I've got needles here that I've bought in the UK. These were peacemakers. Now, these are betweens. I bought these needles, oh, easily 2000, if not in the 1990s. And they still then were £2.60. Then I've obviously be creative with MC Crafts. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if MC Crafts are still going. There you go. And these needles were one pound eighty three. Would you get an eighty three in your price these days? And these are the threads that came with it. They are DMCs. This is a plain beige pearl and DMC stranded embroidery cotton. I think I could do this now, but I would need to get some kind of magnifier. I've seen these things where you can get magnifiers on your glasses. So I've got various. They sold me a length of fabric. And let's see how much of this I got. Oh my gosh. I got quite a bit done. Pull you out of it. White on white, not the easiest thing to see on a camera. There you go. Can you see that? And that's what I'd started to do. Now what I'm going to try and do is zoom you in a little bit on this bit here that's done. Look at that. Is that not just beautiful? And I haven't done very much. And this is what happens with projects. You do so much and you stop. And you can see here at the top, I've started on the next one down here. God, you could see my cat, my head is going down. It doesn't need to go down because I just need to look in the little square. But I'm wondering if that's something I should get out and carry on with. But there is a fundamental error with this. If you are ever doing embroidery. Do you ever leave your needle? in the middle of the work because you shouldn't and when it's been in a drawer for as long as this one's been in a drawer it can leave a mark in the material thankfully it hasn't um, do you know something I'm going to try this this weekend 
and I'm going to try and video it for you so it's on next week's Friday shows. How's that for a commitment? The other thing that I am going to get my head round is organising my stash. Now, I was watching Ruan and she said, she made a comment about her stash and having organised it. So I've gone back through her videos to see, have I missed something? And I've found it. And I'm halfway through watching it. So when I'm sewing this morning, I am going to be watching it. But I just wanted to give you a little heads up as to how I organise my fabrics. Now, I have got the fabric swatch book from Pattern Trace. Now, this is new to me this year and I bought it at the beginning of the year and I haven't told anybody I've bought it so this is a first I'm just just looking up at the television I've got the television on silent behind me and it's running its trailer through the Great British Sewing Bee on Wednesday so in here I have started to put now I'm doing it a bit backwards actually because what I'm doing is I'm putting the fabric in when I've used it but what I adore doing is keeping the little notes that I get from the fabric shops. So what I've done here is I've put in the fabrics when I've used them, but the lovely thing is, so here we are onto this page here. On this page here are two fabrics that I've bought recently and it says stashed. So you put in the date that you stashed it, but underneath I've written used. So for instance, this corduroy here, which is a pair of trousers, which I'm not happy with because I need to sort them. And they are right behind me and they need sorting. I can't even remember which pattern it was that I used. It's a stretch corduroy, but I got it from Beyond the Pink Door. And I love it when the fabric stores put in a little card. And it's just so lovely to get these cards. And underneath, I've got one from Jenny Stitches. And it's really lovely to store the cards that you get with your fabric. So when I'm getting fabric, I need to put them in. I've got another one here from Jess that's so much more. And it was some glitter jersey. Now it's upstairs, I know exactly where it is, but I need to put in the swatches. So I've started filling in, even though I'm not putting one in. Here, I've got another stash, stash info card from Beyond the Pink Door, and that was the fabric I used for my Frida blouse. And another one here from Jess, a couple from Jess there. And um, this one is Fleur de Heures. And then I bought this one here, is uh, the Prosecco Fizz from Lady McElroy. So that is how I am stashing my fabrics and I will come back to that. So I've thought of different ways of, of recording what I've got in my stash. I've tried it in the back of a bullet journal, doesn't work. Tried it with patterns, with fabrics, went through everything to try and get it to work and it didn't. Hi, I'm now, I've just taken Maggie to the vet for her blood tests. It is trying to rule out liver failure because a certain type of liver failure can result from a build-up of certain bits and bodies I'm not quite certain what but that can cause seizures and then if it is just gentle seizures then we have to decide if we're going to medicate her or not and at what level we're going to medicate her so I've got the insurance forms to sort out this afternoon and I hate doing forms all these things and they get in the way of your sewing and they also since I came on to you earlier this morning I've also taken Poppy out on the bike, which was quite exciting. In fact, it was awesome. And just before I sign off for today, I don't know if any of you had a slight issue with your fabrics from Rainbow Fabrics. A few weeks ago, they did a drop and lots of people seem to have issues with their fabrics. So this is the one I had that had issues. It's, it's okay. It's fairly, fairly okay to use. And it is joined at one end, the join, look. Well, that's not what I bought fabric for. I did not buy it to get a join like that. So I thought, right, I'm going to use it anyway. So I started ironing it. And I found a massive area of blue dye on it. If you can see that, right the way through the middle. Yeah. And that's one of a few. And I thought, this is ridiculous. So I did do what everybody said and I did get in touch with Rainbow Fabrics and I said, what are, they were going to offer me my money back and I said, actually, you know, I'm not really bothered about my money back. So would you just like some fabric to make a nice summer dress? So they said, what would you like? So I sent them a choice of two and this is what they sent me. Is that not just beautiful? And this is a beautiful, soft viscose. Just a really simple dress, shirt weight, viscose. 
This was marketed as a viscose, but it's more of a viscose crepe. And actually, I don't like the texture of it as well. So it's there, and it's very much going to school because the children will make dens with it. But this is what's going into my stash for a summer dress, and I think it is utterly beautiful. So on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for your Friday shows this week. And when I sign off and get this one uploading, I'm going to start straight away on the next one because I've got a pattern test to finish, which I'm still doing, and another one to do, and a make for a blog. So on that note, have a lovely weekend. I'm off to Rachel's this evening. First of all, to get myself my vlog uploaded, if it's not uploaded at home, and then I've got a job to do. And I'm sure she'll tell you what that job is in her next vlog. So for now, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.